So, you want to grind up the Verdant Forest to get your hands on Arbalest. Oh, do you really? Do you really need to? Ah, uh, alright, fine. What's up, my name is The Black Link, and in this video we're going to be showing you exactly how you can grind your way towards Arbalest in a reasonably fast manner. This is of course the exotic kinetic linear fusion rifle that Ava's got for sale as a part of the Revelry Spring event. And with a little bit of elbow grease, you can get this thing before long. So let's go ahead and dive on into the guide for how you can get this thing as fast as possible. Now first things first, you need two things in order to purchase the Arbalest. You need to have completed the Revelry Base Triumph Party Hard, and you'll need at least 300 Revelers Essence. Now the latter part there, the Essence is actually going to be really easy to get. Just go do runs of your favorite activities. You get Essence for completing Crucible games, you get Essence for running the Verdant Forest. Myself, I just ran the Verdant Forest for a couple of hours and had more than what I needed before too long. So I would definitely recommend just doing that because it's also going to help you complete the triumph you'll need to get your hands on the Arbalest as well. Now, when it comes to the Verdant Forest, you might be tempted to run for the highest branch possible. You know, you might be tempted to go for that uh, over 100 branch run, but in my experience, you don't really need to do that. Of course, getting further into the Verdant Forest allows you the opportunity of finding more chests along the way, but also when you defeat the five bosses at the end will grant you the maximum number of chests that you can get, which as far as I've seen is about five. And of course, from those five chests can drop any of the Revelry-based legendary armor, as well as a bunch of Reveler's Essence. But in my experience, you only really need to get to around branch 35 plus to get the five chests dropped. So if you're in a dedicated farming group, you really don't need to go too much further than that unless you want to and you just want to get some of the latent treasure chests that are scattered throughout the Verdant Forest. Which definitely is worth your time. Those can drop from 5 to 15 Reveler's Essence apiece. And in my experience, they spawn literally everywhere, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. But yeah, you don't need to spend an hour and a half grinding through one session of the Verdant Forest since the rewards seem to taper down in terms of the chests after you defeat the five bosses after that 35 to 40 branch area. So if you're trying to get this grinding part done as quickly as possible, you can usually probably end your run around there. Now, moving on, of course, you'll also need to get the Triumph Party Hard done. This Triumph requires that you get at least seven other Revelry Triumphs completed. Which can seem like a daunting task, but I promise you it's going to be super easy. At least three to four of these can be completed in the Verdant Forest itself. Triumphs like Spring Cleaning, Verdant Light Events, Spring Hunt, Super Celebratory, and Melee Mayhem can all be done in the Verdant Forest, and you'll probably have all of those outside of Melee Mayhem done just by running it normally. So right off the bat, there are four Triumphs you'll have done just by running the Verdant Forest passively which is why I recommend doing that to build up your Reveler's Essence. You'll just get these done naturally while you're in there. But for the three final Triumphs that you'll need, these are the ones that I think are the easiest to farm. Melee Mayhem, Fireworks, and Verdant Light Cooperative. You can do all three of these solo and really quickly. So let's go ahead and dive into how. For Melee Mayhem, you simply need to land Melee Final Blows on enemies in the Verdant Forest, any Black Armory Forge, or in Raids which is pretty simple to do, pop a tonic for your melee ability energy, and either jump back into a run of the Verdant Forest or maybe the Volander Forge and just melee slap everything. Bonus points if you're an Arc Strider Hunter or a Striker Titan, as they have very powerful melee abilities that you can keep going so long as you're getting melee kills, and stuff like the Volander Forge or even the Verdant Forest itself is going to throw way more than 100 enemies at you, but you should be able to get this done easily. For Fireworks, it's very much the same. Here's what I'd recommend you do. Pop a Reveler's Tonic for grenades, head into a Nightfall. You can pick Lake of Shadows or Pyramidian. Both of those strikes have plenty of enemies for you to grind grenades out on. And then for me, I just loaded up Lake of Shadows, went to literally the first area with the first blight and just started throwing grenades at enemies. I would clear out that first room, let the Taken Hobgoblins kill me, and then you respawn right at the front of that first room with all those enemies back. It literally took me like four or five minutes of grinding to get the 100 grenade kills I needed done. And if you do it in the Nightfall, you don't have to worry about either stealing kills or having kills stolen from you by any other player in your fire team. You can run it solo. As a Warlock, I did this on the top tree for Storm Trance. I threw on the Crown of Tempest for the extra Conduction Tines buff, and I basically had infinite grenade all the time, so I could just keep throwing them until I got the 100 kills I needed. Again, took absolutely no time at all. 
So there you go, that'll help you to get 6 out of the 7 triumphs you need to complete the triumph party hard. The final one is Verdant Light Cooperative, which requires you to generate orbs of light and strikes or raids while affected by revelric light. Now this one's worded a little bit weirdly, but it basically means you're gonna need to get precision headshot kills to generate orbs of light using revelric light. And thankfully, this one's pretty easy to get done in the same way you've been doing some of the other triumphs like fireworks for your grenade kills. You can actually just stay in the Lake of Shadows and do the same thing, just pop headshots on everything you see, and you should build up about 200 orbs of light fairly quickly. For me, I loaded up the last wish, I went right to Cali, uh, and just activated that encounter. Anytime you step on any of those plates, it spawns some Taken Thrall that you can sit back and headshot, which will most of the time generate about two orbs of light, so in about 10-15 minutes you'll have the 200 you need. But there are certainly probably better ways to do this. Shoot, you could always just load up a Nightfall Strike and then head into a nearby Lost Sector. But either way, doing this in a Nightfall or in a solo instance raid is going to be the easiest way for you to get this done. So go on and pop those heads, generate those orbs, and before you know it, you should have everything you need to complete the Triumph Party Hard. Like I said before, those are the seven easiest to farm triumphs. You should be able to get those done fairly quickly in a single afternoon. Anyways, once you've completed Party Hard and gathered up at least 300 Reveler's Essence, return to Ava Levante in the tower and you will be able to purchase the Arbalest. Congratulations Guardian, you got a lot of grinding done and nailed yet another exotic. Now, is it good and worth the trouble? Uh, it's meh. We'll cover most of this in the review for the weapon. The Arbalest basically kind of functions a bit like a Crooked Fang. It's in the 533 charge time tier for linear fusion rifles. And its special ability, Compounding Force, is great for popping shields. Like, I haven't run into a shield on anything outside of, like, a match game enemy in a Nightfall that can withstand a shot from this thing. But outside of that utility, it is hard to justify using the Arbalest over some of the other exotics we have right now. Now, don't get me wrong, popping that shield and then getting that bonus damage, uh, landing a precision shot in PvE is great. You deal a lot of damage with this thing. But that damage is generally only noticeable or really worthy of exotic status when you land a precision shot. And even then, you could be using other stuff like other snipers, other uh, linear fusion rifles and whatnot just to make a bit more impact there. In PvP, it's actually a pretty fun gun, uh, outside of the fact that you basically need to run with linear fusion abilities like Scavenger and Reserves that you spawn with, you know, more than one shot in the magazine. But it is capable of one-shotting in PvP if you aim for the head, of course, just like any other sniper rifle or linear fusion rifle. But overall, with the bevy of fantastic PvP exotics we have right now, and you know, just other better legendary options, it's kind of hard to justify using it in PvP. I had a little bit of fun with it, you know, nailing headshots and, and whatnot. And of course, you can actually one-shot body shot if you happen to drop something like an empowering rift and then take pot shots at people with this, so there are some cheesy builds you can run with it. But after a few games, I did find myself falling back to like the Ace of Spades, Thorn, Last Word, and all the other mainstays of PvP. I probably need to give this gun a little bit more time to form a full opinion on it, but right now it's just kind of eh. But hopefully you Guardians who are going to be getting your hands on it, formulate some opinions of your own and leave me those down in the comment section below. Because that is it, that is how you can grind out the Arbalest in a single day. Is it worth it? Well, I'll leave that up to you. But thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But anyways, I'm out for now. As always, I'm Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.